Well, now that the uh, economy is slowly opening back up, I think many traders and investors are worrying about potentially getting hit with the second wave, uh, COVID-19. And um, I think, you know, market gap down on Wednesday. And that's what we saw that um, gap down there after the day after uh, the Fed spoke. That was that day right here. And we gapped down, there was a quite a bit of gap down. That was actually a 6% gap down. We've been tracking this island gap. Ever since then, we've been kind of a bottoming out in this uh, rising pivot. We gapped up again Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it's been dripping lower. And you can kind of see that this week, there's some up and down movement, uh, but it's positive for the week but it's been dripping lower ever since we gapped up today, so, or gapped up on Tuesday morning. So what does this all mean? Uh, what can we expect going into next week? Uh, let's dive in, dissect this thing, and try to figure out uh, what we can expect going into next week. It's all coming up right now. <music> Ladies and gentlemen, Kay Kim here. Uh, welcome to the market update. I uh, hope you guys had a good week trading this week. Uh, we've seen a little bit of volatile session today. Uh, we're going to go follow up on the 65 minute chart. We'll dissect everything, trying to figure out uh, what we can expect going to tomorrow or Monday. But today, here's the lineup here. We'll be talking about Spider, Q's, Diamond. Let's do EEM, Emerging Markets. On the equity side, I've got Apple, Google, Roku, Baidu. Let's look at uh, gold and end the video with the Bitcoin. Let's take a look on that uh, 65 minute here and trying to figure out what had happened today. So here, let's zoom it up a little bit. So you can see um, we initially gapped up today. This is where the market closed yesterday. We talked about this yesterday. We gapped up right i've adjusted this once again i've adjusted this uh resistance once again right this is kind of what i mean it was right here and then i'll just it here and adjust it because again this falling resistance all it represents is the downtrend right that we got that short-term downtrend going on there that's all it represents so that's why you don't ever want to um get your you know resistance too tightly just because it you know, because my resistance line was like this, just because it gapped above the falling resistance, that does not mean that trend has been broken. How do we know the trend is broken? When you start to cultivate what? Higher lows and higher highs. And ultimately, you really want to see this gap, you know, filled, pulling back, cultivate higher low, maybe some of the short term moving average going hitting it. And then you start to see higher lows and higher highs. And that, at that point, then you can say, okay, yeah, we're no longer, we're no longer in this. We're no longer bound by this falling resistance. And that's why I've adjusted it this morning. I've been tweeting out. I tweeted out a little more today uh, in the morning time, midday. And then uh, towards the end of the day, the last hour, uh, giving you update on this chart. So you can follow me at 2K Kim on stock tweets and on Twitter because I do tweet things out throughout the day. Um, but anyway, so so that's the first hour. We saw, you know, a little bit of gap up there, right? And then um, first hour, second hour. So here's something interesting thing happened because when, when we gapped up on, you know, look, as you can see that on uh, this morning, first hour, Right, that was a gap up level right here. That's where it closed yesterday. That's where it opened, right? So we gapped up and then it fell. Interestingly enough, this time around, the gap fill level did not act as support. Many times when the gap gets filled, you know that it acted as support. You know what I mean? A lot of times it does. Even here, um, this was a big gap. That gap got filled that's that, that day. And act that support gotten right back up there. And we've seen that happen. We've been tracking gaps. I've been covering this in the last couple months. And most times you do see when the gap gets filled, it's gonna see at least, you know, maybe hour of a of a you know of a move. Like even here, you can see that that was a gap down right 
and then that hour on this day we fill that gap and you sh it showed us that long upper tail so at least that that hour we saw weakness there after the gap was filled here flip side to it because now this is an up gap so when you're coming down we didn't see any kind of buying activities there and that was a first sign that you know what there's some uh, momentum here to the downside there's some heavier selling at this point so once that level got taken out we kind of blew right through it so once that gap right once that gap was not respected right so that gap up price came back gap was filled once we didn't see any kind of support in that vicinity once the gap was filled that at that point that selling pressure was much heavier so you can see my short-term moving average didn't get respected either do you see that so you can see here even here that short-term moving average act as resistance short-term moving average at the act as a support act as support and because this was a pretty decent sized gap down also but it acted support there and the last hour of yesterday's trading that level also acted support you can see that it brought it down that lower tail represents that that hour you know price was down it was red candle but later it brought it back up it turned to green this time this thing just blew right through my short-term moving average as you can see first that gap was filled we didn't see any kind of activities there deep buying activities so bears are a little bit more fierce you know looking at this price action next third hour we flushed through there was no uh you know that short-term moving average was not enough to hold that but the mid-term moving average however was hanging around in this vicinity seems to that look that mid-term move that that you know that you know blue dotted moving average it seems like that one did act as support that one did act as so you can see that long lower wake and close that hour above the moving average there right we've been talking about that midterm moving average that it does have a pretty significance as you can see here a couple times that um so we came down retail and so we're just right at this level right now so let's zoom back in here um and so last three hours you can see a long upper wick so bulls trying to get up so at one point this looked like a red candle all the way up but you can see now my short-term moving averages or short-term moving average this weak squiggly line there did it was acting as support yesterday right and now acting as resistance here last couple hours that's how that's why the price never closed above my short-term moving average in early this is 65 minute chart so once we broke right through it bears attempted to reclaim that short-term moving average it failed because old support now is becoming resistance right and now we're trading just right at this midterm moving and just right at it just right here right and yesterday I gave you guys uh, the fib level yesterday or the day before talked about how the you know market should slide you should see 308 306 acting as support right I measure it from here right that's my fit and measure it from this 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 low this peak and this is the first level of my fib and then the second hour I gave you guys these levels yesterday uh, you know should the price slide tomorrow you should watch for 308 306 and you can see at one point we even lost that midterm moving average and bears brought all the way down you see that long lower wick there that long lower wick represents uh bearish pressure um but at the time you can see that my 50 percent retracement zone was at 306 we quickly got back up here and then it's just you know and the bulls tried it one more time the final hour one more time to get reclaim that short-term moving average but was not able to do that and then close the day with kind of like a shooting star candle there but still staying above 308 so here's um here's what's going on overall so 308 
is kind of an important pivot, right? So you can see that that's a prior resistance. Remember on this day here, June 11, we gapped up and it, it got to 308 and then we tanked, right? And then the price got back up back in June 15th, right? It hit 308 and we pull back a little bit and that pullback made this price action come all the way back down to about 304 and this happened last Friday, right? And it, it retested my short term moving. So there's some significance in that level 308. And then we gapped up on Monday, right? Oh, that was maybe Tuesday. So this was Monday, this is Tuesday, right? We gapped up on Tuesday, right? And price came all the way back down to where? 308. So 308, 308, 308. Where's my where's my midterm moving average? 308, 308. My midterm moving average has been hovering around 308 this entire time in the last couple of weeks. And then this is the first time we're sitting at 308 ever since price did come down on Tuesday morning there. So we got above 308. We're staying above 308. We did not close below 308. We are we we stayed up above it, and that's a 50%. We came down intraday, intra hour, and hit it, but finally getting back up. So now that we are below my short term moving average, because we traded below, we closed the day below my short term moving average. So I've been giving it neutral in the short term, right? Neutral, you guys remember that short term neutral? Well, now I'm giving it bearish. The short term benefit of the doubt goes to the sellers because of this, because now you can see that my short term moving average is also declining. We're no longer rising. We're moving sideways. And then now we're declining. So short-term benefit of the doubt goes to the sellers. What about midterm? Okay, you've been saying the midterm benefit of the doubt goes to the buyers. I have to say neutral in the midterm because I start to see my midterm moving average is kind of moving sideways slightly. And at the same time, we're dealing with that falling resistance. And this guy, that's the problem. That that bearish island top reversal gap. Remember, we talked about this as soon, we talked about that on Tuesday. The longer this gap remains open, the more hectic it's going to be. Remember, we talked about that on Tuesday, right? We talked about it on Tuesday, we talked about it on the weekend. The longer this gap stays open, the more hectic it's gonna be. So it's been taking a while for the buyers trying to get back up. We've been just pretty much moving sideways, uh, kind of go up and down, go up and down. So it took too long. Bulls uh, not able to fill this gap. We failed today also. So now it's been now quite a bit. So when was the last time this gap was open? June 11. So it's been about seven, eight days that this gap has been open. So because of that, I have to give it you know, uh, I have to give it it benefit of doubt. Benefit of the doubt. Sellers for short term. I'm leaning towards now neutral in the midterm. So mid midterm is neutral, and long term, however, is still bullish. So longer term is still bullish because remember, this guy is still rising. We're not seeing any kind of slowdown there on my longer term moving average. So bearish short term. Uh, midterm sideways, neutral, bullish longer term, and you can kind of see everything's been just right there because you can see we're just right at it, like 308, just in between the downtrend resistance, in between the, the rising uh, moving average, and my midterm moving average moving sideways. So we're right at this juncture going into the weekend. At this point, I can't make any kind of prediction or forecast where the market is gonna be. Um, it's um, we're just right at the middle of the junction. Market is great at this. Market is great at making you always guess every single day. It's never gonna give you just you know really clear signal. And 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 you know when the market is staying up, you know when the market is staying up above my short term moving average like that, you always want to give benefit of that benefit of the doubt. Even when this thing comes down back to 50, my middle moving average, you can see my moving average is still rising higher. 
and you see how quickly it got back up, right? So when, when my midterm moving average is rising like that, I will give benefit of the doubt to the buyers in the short term and midterm. Well, if it's above my short term moving average, right? Quickly come down, but it just quickly got back up. And so quickly we did see some slowing down on my midterm moving average, but it quickly turned back up here. I think this is the longest time that my midterm moving average has been pretty much moving sideways. This We had a briefly where we said there's, a, there's yeah, there's, this was still kind of rising here, but we had a brief sideways move. But I think this is the longest time where you see that we, we dipped here and then moving sideways because here where we dipped a little bit and then it started rising again. So there's a good bullish momentum. We're seeing something a little bit different here in the last several couple weeks ever since we saw that island top bottom reversal, island, or island top reversal, right? Ever since then, things got a little bit different. If bulls would have gotten up there and filled that gap as quickly as possible, maybe things would have been different. But like I said, if that, the longer this thing stays open, you know, the more hectic it's gonna be. And it's been, it's been exactly that. It's been hectic for the buyers. I mean, bulls been trying very, very hard staying up, but it's definitely been, definitely, definitely been hectic for them. So um, let's look at the oscillator and see if we can get, if we can get better picture here but we're not seeing any kind of crow there's a little attempt we continue to see these two um lines we're not seeing a cross we're not seeing a cross we're still seeing we saw a little bit of that but we saw something like this so oscillator is actually still giving us a bearish signal and we're not at the bottom of the trend yet we don't, we're, I mean, the bottom of the band yet, which means we have room to move. We have this much room. It, it means if bull, if bears bring it down, there's room to move. They're not all yet tired. Bears are not tired. They have a lot of energy left. So if bears gonna bring it down, if sellers gonna bring it down, they are they are capable of bringing this thing down. They are capable of it. So I think going into next week. What I can say is at this point is that we got some bear selling pressure. Um, looks like bull, in looking on the daily chart here now, it looks like bulls try to get up, get up today, trying to fill this gap, was not successful. And when that happened, you know, bears brought it down and there's some selling momentum there. But looking at the daily chart here, I think um, if we don't find support quickly, this is my 20 MA, I believe. Um, let's look, that is, yes, that's a 20 EMA. So you can see my 20 EMA is kind of my short term moving average on the daily chart. So, um, sentiment is different in different, different time frame. Like my 65 minute chart analysis is different. My daily chart analysis is different. My weekly chart, monthly chart, all that analysis is going to be different. So looking at the daily, you know, it, now they were staying above it. You can see that that those are two two times where price did stay above. The only difference is at the time my short term moving average on the daily they were rising, and this thing this thing has been just kind of curling sideways. So still on the daily, I still think it's it's been neutral, and also because the pressure, the selling pressure that's been coming off of this island top there. So. Um, Short term still neutral and bears are not tired yet. We looked at the os looked at oscillator, and that oscillator told us there's a little there are more room. There's actually a lot of room to move to the downside. You can see that right here. So bears are not tired. If there's opportunity, bears are gonna try to bring it back down to about 297 to 295. There, we have not yet retested my midterm moving average on my daily chart, which is at 295, right. 295 there so that's kind of where we're at so i really think at this point is really 50 50 like longer term pressure like longer term um trend is definitely bullish you know we we got these higher lows and you know bulls are faithfully cultivating higher highs higher lows, and, and and the wind is blowing to the upside but that does not mean that bears can bring it down you know what I mean? That doesn't mean that, you know, on Monday or something like the Tuesday, uh, bears can bring it down. There's some still some fear there. Um, 
you know, regarding some fundamentals and not only not because of the fundamentals, but because market has been pretty extended. We see we saw about 45, 50 percent run in a little over two months. So, like I said, like I, I, you know, I'm not surprised to see a pullback and I won't be surprised to see a further pullback. And I won't be surprised to see a, maybe even a sideway consolidation before going higher, because after this kind of move, remember, we talked about we made a move, you know, you made a sideways and now making another move here. And maybe on the other sideways won't be a bad deal. So at this point, I'm pretty neutral going into next week. Just just if I look at things in overall picture, obviously trend is up in the long term, but I'm going into next week. I'm kind of neutral. I think I think either we're this is I think what's what's gonna happen going into next week. Either we're gonna see some big upside move or we're gonna see some big downside move. I think that's kind of what's gonna happen next week, but it's kind of 50 50 at this point. So if we do see a downside move, you know, I think there's a here, I'll give you guys some levels. Let's do this level here, 294 and 286. If, if price can get below that rising pivot. Remember that rising pivot is a pretty solid pivot, right? I mean, this pivot goes all the way back to late April. You can see that late April, you know, March 10th, you know, late April again, or late February, late February here. And then, you know, in early March, late April, early May, and then just mid June here in 15th. And that level has been acting as support or the rising pivot, you know, it was support and then became a resistance and it became a resistance again. And then it became support. So it has a it, it has a certain stance. It has a certain weight. Right? You know what I mean? It has a pretty impressive resume. So we come down there around 300 level. We are going to find some support. And that's the level you're going to see my longer term moving averages hanging out in that vicinity. Right. So my longer term moving average is also hanging on. That's the last time when we saw the six percent pullback that gap down. Right. You can see it was not able to get above it. See my longer to moving average in that vicinity. That's the same level, right? That's the same level where it's co coinciding with that rising pivot. So you see 300, 300, 294 area is a very, very solid support. I could see this price coming back down, retesting 299, 300. I could see that happening. And still will be in an uptrend. Even if we see, looking at things overall perspective, long term, longer term perspective, it will still be an uptrend. Even if it comes down to 300 or 295 ish level. Remember, even 295, we have that mid my midterm moving average residing in that vicinity, right? That's for the daily chart midterm. And bears were not able to get below that level ever since we got above it in early April. So two, it will be pretty difficult for the bears bring it down anywhere below 294 next week. I think it's going to find support at, you know, 300 or 298. And at the same time, if, if we do see price coming back down to 300 or 295, by the time that oscillator would be then at the time would be then overbought, oversold, I mean, and would we have to then they would have to go through another, you know, a reversal at the time, right? So that's where I stand at this point. I'm neutral going into next week. I think it could be it, the move could be either direction. But at the same time, we have to understand that benefit of the doubt goes to the buyers in the longer term. But I'm sticking with the neutral in the midterm and bearish in the short term. Bearish in the short term, neutral in the midterm, bullish in the longer term. So we did see some, you know, pressure here, about four days of selling pressure, right? And that could continue. So we are kind of trending to the downside, at least in the short term, in the very, very short term, just this week. We've been trending lower last four days, but we are positive for the week. Slightly, right? Yeah, we are positive for the week because that's where we ended on Friday. And then yeah, so and then this is where it closed today. So we're positive slightly for the week, but just for now, on the last four days, uh, we are seeing some uh, some little bit of a selling pressure there. So and and I think I think you know um, 
I don't I don't I don't think we're gonna see you know March lows happening and I, I've been talking I don't know I think I've been saying that maybe since like late April early May or something like that that I don't I don't believe that we're gonna see a March lows getting retested this year maybe even not even next year and that's that's my long-term analysis tells me that um, despite what you think it may happen with this potentially a second wave but I, I don't think we're gonna go that low I think um, the worst case scenario for next week will be like 295 or something like that let's go to Q's so Q's finally filled all that gap there let's remove that um, and um, Let's see. I'm just looking at my other screens here, see if I can find anything. Yeah. So I obviously Q's is pretty extended. Sooner or later we will have correction, but the problem is we nobody knows when. Nobody knows when in what manner. It could potentially go all the way to 260 before pulling back. We may pull back that. You know, we don't know. All we know is every pullback has been met with strong bounce on the queues, right? A lot of people are dying to buy the dip because they don't want to miss out. Sooner or later, that's going to break and we may see some shakeout, like maybe a steeper decline to retest in my midterm moving average there. You said blue dotted moving average. We haven't seen that um, level getting retested. Sooner or later, we will. The problem is we don't know when. So this is, you know, when you're dealing with market sentiment like this, what you do is, and especially if you're a long-term investor, like if you've been accumulating positions maybe somewhere in this vicinity, what you do is um, you, you you close out some of your positions at these levels. Like you, you take some profits, but you always leave some behind. That way you don't feel like you're missing out or you don't feel like you're gonna let, be left out if market does continue higher. And then let's say you close out some positions here with some, take some profits. And then if this thing continues higher to maybe 260 or you know 250, 260, and you start closing a little more, little more, little more like that, and that's the that's the that's the approach I've been taking, right? I've been closing out some of my um, positions that I went long near the March lows there, but I'm still holding a lot of my longs at the same time, um, just in case um, you know if we do move higher continually. Um, you know, maybe we see a short term bounce and retest that moving average again and just goes right back up. Right. And also at the same time, I have um, now that I've closed out positions, I will have, you know, uh, some buying power left for me to, um, you know, if we do see a steeper decline. Like obviously, for me, for my time frame, if this thing comes down to retest at 20 MA, 230, I won't be buying. But if we do see all of a sudden this thing starts seeing much of a deeper correction, like this thing start coming down to 235, 217, for my time frame as a position trader and a long-term investor, that's a good level for me to re start to accumulate again somewhere in this vicinity. But I still have some longs there, so just in case if this thing pulls, up, pulls back a little bit before going higher. So that's kind of the strategy. Versus you're trying to pick top here, you know, it will be very, very diff difficult because you think this was top. Well, you tried it here, you tried it here, you tried it there, you tried it there, you tried it here, you tried it here. It wasn't successful unless you're a, like a day trader or scalper. But you've been looking for like some big drawdown. It was, it's been, it's been painful this year to look, you know, ever since this thing bottomed here. And a lot of people, you know, maybe thought there is going to be a, a kind of a bear market rally before this thing tanking more. Well, that thesis hasn't worked out actually for the last 10 years, to be honest with you. Any kind of 20% or 15%, 30% decline. This is the first time we've seen 30% though in the last 10 years, but any kind of steep decline have been met with not so much as a, this is a, this is a, what we did see V reversal 2018, late 2018. And this is the second time seeing a V reversal in the stock market in 2020. But if you look at like 2012, if you look at like 2015 and 16, it was more of a like, you know, double bottom. I think 2012 was like inverted head and shoulders, you know, um, and 2015, 16 was like going up, come back down and get back up kind of fashion. But it never like turned into a real actual like prolonged bear market. Right. 
So I want to continue to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers also on the NASDAQ, but it's extended on the NASDAQ. That's that's the only bearish thing I see. There's, I mean, as far as the chart is concerned, it's more bullish than 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 spider. Because there's no, like we are at the highs, there's no downtrend resistance in the short term. There's no island reversal. There's nothing. So there's a chance because the NASDAQ is holding up well, there's a chance that NASDAQ could, you know what I mean, pull Spider up next week at the same time. Right? Let's go to Diamond here. So Diamond, let's move that. Like, oh, we got a little bit left, but still have that left there. Let's remove that for a second. Okay, let's do that. So diamond is very, very similar sentiment. The Dow Jones is similar sentiment there. So that um, island gap reversal, uh, island top reversal, that has not been filled. And, you know, they got up, but still left some behind, and that's bearish. And we talked about the longer it stays open, the more hectic it's going to be for the buyers, and it's been that hectic. So, um so you can see we got this uh, rising pivot that's at uh, around 254 but also i gave you 250 level and there's a gap in that area so yeah so you can see that 250 level there so i think the worst case scenario we come down to 250 but again by the time we get to 250 or 254 i think it's um my you know my oscillator is going to be pretty, you know, at the time, I think bear is going to get tired and then buyer is going to try to look to um, see a bounce at the time. But very, very similar price action here. Also, only difference is uh, we're kind of hanging around in that long term moving average. But overall, we saw very, very fast vertical up move. And um, maybe too many people got too zealous chasing this and market is punishing all the chasers up top. And that's what we market got up here. And then when markets saw a very fast down move, maybe a lot of bears, uh, they chased a the down move. And then we saw move up move there. So it's been a volatile, you know, last um, several weeks, right? It's been a lot of volatile in several weeks. But market is overall, though, still floating up, still floating higher. Even though we saw big down day, you know, last week, Thursday, market gapped right back up. And then it's been just hoovering around in that, in the middle point, right? In itself, overall sense, that's a bullish sentiment. Overall sense, because the longer you let, the longer you let buyers kind of hang around, you know what they do? They will take their, they, they, they will take their, their, their time, and they'll prepare for the right time before getting it up. But again, with the recent short-term selling pressure, I won't be surprised to see. Uh, diamond also coming back down to 250 maybe even 256 there let's go to emerging market emerging market is uh is kind of interesting because um i mean they all look similar they all look kind of similar you can see that we got the rising pivot there also right that's the rising pivot we found support there and you know we can see that we have a higher lows higher high trend uptrend is intact and EM is gappy. They're, they're, they're going to be gappy every day anyway, so we can't really track gaps here. We can't really track gaps in this market because it's going to gap or gap up or gap down every day. So um, I still want to give benefit of the doubt to the buyers in emerging market as well. In, in, the, in, the, in the midterm of things, right? We can't even draw that. Um, looks like we have that support as well. And I'll put some horizontal support. Yeah, I think those levels are important. So we got that rising uh, support there. We got the rising pivot there. And then horizontal support, 38.51, 37.74. If we do see a pullback, these levels are going to act as very, very strong support. Like what I don't want you to do is that price gets below it. Just because it got slightly below it, that does not mean that trend is done, that this thing is gonna come all the way back down. How many times are you trying to short that and that doesn't work out? Like if I if I do that here, like here, look at that. Like if I did this like that, right? Do you see it? If I did that right like that, and you're like, oh my gosh, look at that. That trend is broken right here. 
right? It okay. You see that right here? Like if you did that, it looked like the trend is broken, but then it just went up. That's why you never want to act emotionally just because it break below the uptrend slightly. I see a lot of people doing that. I see even like on YouTube, I see a lot of other guys, you know, showing you that long term, you know, bullish chart with the trend line and then like, you know, spider gets spider gets slightly below it and then they say, "Oh, there you go. We got, you know what I mean, this thing. This thing is going to do this and do that now." That's not how that so put the trend lines are there so you kind of kind of see the trajectory of this move this is the reason why i kind of adjust them as i go but you really want to look at it as more of an overall picture but we're still in an uptrend uh if we do fall back um you know 38 38 51 37 74 i think the worst case scenario maybe next week but we still have that rising support rising pivot there so overall stands is bullish uh, in, you know, just looking at this time frame right here, just looking at this here, uh, and I think also there was um, falling downtrend, you know, and we slightly gotten above it. See, but that doesn't mean we still got lower highs overall. You can see that we still kind of got lower highs here, and then you can see my longer term moving average is still declining. So, like a longer term picture. It's kind of more neutral at this point, like longer term. You can see it more of a new because they, you know, we, we made a like steep low and we're kind of hanging around the midpoint. So longer term picture is kind of a more of a neutral stance on emerging market. But just looking at this price section here, like you know, this right here, that looks like we are we're we're slowly cultivating higher lows and higher highs there. Uh let's go to Apple here real quick. Apple, you know, same like say what I said about. Nasdaq, the QQQ, right? Is is it's gonna be same analysis. Um, what I said about QQQ, so I'm not gonna spend too much time. But um, I'm actually have not closed out any of my Apple positions that I've accumulated around like 250s. I'm actually holding full because I think I don't want to close anything out because if I do see a pullback, you know, maybe I would like to buy the dip around 314, um, 326 maybe, but 314. And like 302, we got gap area there. That if this thing comes out of 302, that will be that will be a gift. I don't think it will, but if we do come down to 302, that's a gift. <laughs> that's definitely a gift for this year. But I think 326, 314. I'm really looking for 314 for me to accumulate more. Um, you know, and some people ask me like, why wouldn't you just close out your positions and then like reload at 314? The problem with that is as a long term, and if you're a short term trader, maybe that's what you do. But as a long term investor, you really want to practice compound uh, growth, meaning, OK, so let's say let's say I close out everything and then I'm waiting for this thing pull back to 314. And that's my buy zone, right? That's I'm going to buy at 314. What, you, what if this thing goes up or goes down to 335 or like maybe 326? But I told myself I'm going to buy at 314 and then it goes up without you. And then this thing goes to 400, 450 and you're just left out. Now you got no position, right? So you're not writing it anymore. That's going to get you. That's going to hurt you. Or what if? I did close out everything, and then this thing did come down, and then like I kind of got, I felt kind of scared, right? <laughs> like because market is volatile. So what I do is I should have bought whatever I closed out, but I got only a little bit in, and then this thing goes up quite a bit without me, and or with little bit. But even if I got back in, if I reload everything, what was gonna happen is I'm only writing whatever I reloaded here to here. So what? What, how the compounding works is, okay, I accumulated positions here, right? And all of those positions I'm holding right now, right? And then this thing pulls back to 314, right? I have not unloaded any of my positions, and I'm loading up here also, right? And then as the market goes higher, right? I'm not only I'm, I have what I accumulated here, but I also have what I accumulated here, and they are all going together. That's how you compound. Right, your positions, and that's how investors, long-term investors, that's how they make their money, and then they ride it and ride it. They keep increasing their positions, and once they get to, and then I do my like long-term analysis, and then I get to a point where I'll be unloading a lot of those shares, maybe half of it or something like that. But I'll do that, you know, continually year after year, and riding the trend, and then as 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 the market, you know, as as the Apple gets into extended level, which 
you know, I think here when this thing pretty much just went vertical, because I was accumulating long down here, and then I bought here, and then I bought here, like seriously down here, and I bought here and here, and then I wrote it all the way up, and then when this thing just did that, I was closing out 70, 80% of my positions. And then this thing did that. I actually got it a little early. I think I bought it right here a little bit at first. And then I bought here, and then I bought here, and then I bought here, something like that. But that's how I do my long-term investing, is that I don't just buy and then hold 20 years. I'm gonna buy, and then I'm gonna continue to accumulate on a good level. And then I'm gonna have that compounding effect take, take place. And then when Apple get into that, you know, prime, I want to, I want to able to ride the primary run, right? Not just a little bit here and here, but I want to be able to ride, you know, some like 50 to 100 percent run, maybe even more. And then, you know, I do my long term analysis. I got to get to a point where, okay, this is pretty extended, and then I close a lot of them out. Let's go to Google. So same, same analysis here on Apple. Nothing much. I think overall we're extended, but again, it can keep grinding higher. Let's go to Google. I also own Google and I have not seen this thing. Like Google, I own from here. And when this thing got up here, I didn't close out any of my positions. I really didn't. I bought it here, I bought it here. And then when COVID-19 happened, well, I lost all my gains. And that's what gets a lot of people to stay like short term because they're like, well, you know, look at that. Yeah, all your gains on gains are gone now. Well, guess what? I bought more here, and then now I'm compounded more. So you can see whatever I was holding, whatever I was holding here, that plus what I bought more here, now they're going together. And I believe that you know this year, next year, I think app and Google is gonna do well. And then as this thing starts to go up, now I'm making more because of my entry here and here, because they're both going up with me. So that's how you, that's how, um, you know, a lot of these long-term investors who, you know, that's how they, uh, they build wealth over time, doing that. Um, it's not always just, you know, a lot of retail traders who doesn't know what they're doing, they'll buy and they'll hold for 20 years and they don't wanna look at it because they can't, you know what I mean? They don't know, they don't know what's, what's, what's going on, but, that's not the approach. So it's not just because I'm a long-term investor doesn't mean that's not how I do things. Um, anyway, Google, the gap was filled, struggling a little bit. We're kind of, you know, but I have to say where gap is there. That's a pretty big gap. That's a support. Um, is there a pivot? It's not strong, but it's there. It's just there. It's yeah. It says here, 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 here. So uh, we're currently staying above my 20 MA there, but we got midterm moving average there. We got longer term. So I think yeah, we got we got one 1350, 1360s. If we do see a fall, that's gonna be strong support. But if this thing comes down to 1300, 1300, and start retesting this gap area, that's a gift. That's gift, I'm telling you. 1300, that's a gift. Let's go to Roku. I have no position on Roku. Um, somebody requested on YouTube, so um, let's see. So we got that falling resistance. Uh, you see, this is what I'm saying, man. Right here, you're like, you're watching this way too closely and you'll be like, oh my God, oh man, look at this. That's a breakout, man. That's a, that's a bullish move. That's a bull flag, clean breakout, bro. And you go long there, didn't work out because that's not how it always works in a downtrend. You gotta start to see cultivation and that thing came down pretty hard. So um, that's, why, that's why you kinda wanna not look at it like that and I've been telling you guys not to do that so I just it's okay to miss one of these because all these trend lines all these implying is I want you to look at the trajectory of the trend line not trade it in a way that we're like wow look at that man that's a uh, resistant 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 
That's definitely a breakout, but it wasn't. You see how that quickly turned around? Because believe it or not, a lot of people still trade like that. And sometimes you do hit it. Sometimes it does work, but from what I can see, more often than not, it's not going to work. So you're going to get burned many times trying to trade that way. That's why I don't trade off of these little short-term flagging patterns, you know? So it's okay to kind of adjust it. If I actually go to line chart, I think it will make sense more. Look at that. So if I go to line chart, you see how I'm looking at it from there. If I go to line chart, see, it lines up like that. Lined up perfectly here and here, here. I go back to candles and that lines up here, here, and here, and here. So sometimes it's nice to go back and forth with the line chart and candle chart because that candle wicks sometimes it's kind of deceiving so overall we are still in a downtrend in a bigger picture we are trying to cultivate higher low here that's a good thing but we got this challenge trend going on we got this downtrend going on I don't want to be long until I see a cultivation so what cultivation am I looking for I'm looking for at least this thing going up and then doing this doing that and then doing this so I'll be inclined to buy maybe somewhere here somewhere here somewhere there or if you want to be sure you can buy it maybe here but sometimes it doesn't pull back so you kind of have to watch sometimes this thing just pulls up and then pull back this much so you really have to know but I'll be I don't right now like as a long-term investor like I don't even want to trade this you know, as a position trader, because I, when I get into a trade, I, want, I don't want to hold, I hold things several months, maybe three to six months or something like that. Unless I, even my short term trades, I would hold a couple months. So when you're dealing with the kind of a downtrend here in overall picture, it's not for me to get in. This is the reason why I don't have a position on Roku. And also you can see there's a little bit, a little bit of gap there, not a huge deal. So I won't be, in, you know, I won't be interested until I see this thing starting to get in an uptrend. And then after you see a establishment of an uptrend and then it pulls back, that's a good level to buy. Then you know that we're in a longer term uptrend. So on that pullback, that's a good level to start to accumulate at that time. Nothing is 100% guaranteed. It just means that you have a higher probability making that, you know, longs work if you buy after the trend has been established to the upside right now. It's difficult. It's holding up though because the market is up, because the market has been up, but Roku has been overall in a downtrend here. You can see that's even lower low. So it will need to at least reclaim. There's a big gap there too. Yeah, that yeah, that's gonna be difficult. So yeah, I, you know what? Not nah, because I didn't see the gap before. Now that I see the gap, it has to fill the gap and kill this momentum. So it has to go all the way to fill the gap and then pull back. If we see that, I will be interested around 137 or something like that to go long. I really, I really would, but I need to see this in gap getting filled here. And it's until then, I don't even if it goes straight up, I don't want to go long because there's too many falling resistances there. And yeah, there is we got lower highs already. So going against the trend is very difficult. Uh, difficult to be sustained. Let's go to Baidu. Only th the only reason I want to show you on Baidu is because I um, here where is it? I think I spent too much time here. Video is getting kind of quite long. I just want to show you this. I actually think Baidu is t uh, bottoming out. Uh, I think this is a good pattern for long-term investors, not for short-term trader or swing trader or anything like that. Because Baidu is going to be continue to be volatile. But if you're a long-term investor, you can see these are that's what you call bullish divergence. And this thing came all the way back down. This is a monthly chart, so you can see my oscillator came all the way back down to this level and we crossed. And a lot of times when they do, they're usually major bottoming pattern there. Um, it's not, nothing is 100%, but as long as the market is, um, you know, is in a primary term uptrend, the overall market is, then I think Baidu is going to do well. And I've been, I've been accumulating recently somewhere in this vicinity here. And I've actually been accumulating before. And I've just bought more. So let's uh, let's go to gold. Uh, gold still same. Still same. We're still hanging around. We're still kind of, you know, um, 
consolidating, nothing crazy though, but oh, we're not, why are we here? Uh, what was I looking for? Oh, daily chart. There you go. I was looking for that. So hold on a second. Okay, so we talked about this potentially a bearish divergence, uh, but just slightly trying to get up though. We still got the pressure there, right? And then it's been consolidating here. So I really think this time is just, you still kind of watch and see what happens here. I think we are kind of overbought on the weekly though. So again, I I don't know. I mean, I I, I am I I have I am long on all. I am long gold. I'm long on silver. I'm long on GDX. So GLD, SLV, GDX. But I've been long since um, uh, you know, mid 2019, and you know, so I, I'm just holding it. Because if I if I do see a pullback, I'll 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 just buy more. But if it continues higher, that's great. Then I'll just hold whatever I'm holding. So. So that's why I'm not doing anything at this point. And, and plus, cause I'm a long term and I just, so I'm just not doing anything. I'm just watching and see what's gonna happen. We're just pretty much been grinding and sideways. Sideways moves been bullish, but you know how these things are. Sometimes they like to switch things up. So could potentially break out to the downside or potentially could break out to the upside. So for me, I think this is a level that I'm not gonna do anything. Uh, if we pull back, I'll buy more. If it goes higher, then I'll just ride what I already, what I already have. Um, one last one, let you guys go with this Bitcoin. We talked about this last week. That's the problem here again, that downtrend. You see, this is what I mean. You see that, oh my God, man, that's a breakup, bro. And that's really not a breakout. You can see we poke his head up. Maybe too many people got too excited too quickly. And then we just sliding lower there. It looks like there are too many failed attempts. One, two, three, four failed attempts. And now we're at that neckline there. It looks like a double top. You see double top on the falling resistance after we have lower highs and we're just retesting necklines. That's pretty bearish, though we could still try to bounce back and forth and bulls can still turn this into a consolidation before moving higher. But I have no position on Bitcoin right at this point. Um, like I said, I won't be buying until I see trend developing, right? Remember I told you that I'll be buying once it reclaims 13, pulls back, and then I start to see development of higher lows and higher highs. We don't have higher lows and higher highs. We got lower highs and lower lows, and I think it's gonna come back down and retest um, this level here. If we lose, here, let's put that. If we lose that neckline, yeah, that's going to come down to uh, $8 per share on GBTC. Um, you know, potentially bulls can turn this into a some kind of a consolidation, but you know what happens in a downtrend. You see in an uptrend, remember you guys remember me saying, well, you know, okay, you said that when, when prices are hanging around, float around, that's a bullish. It favors the buyers. Yes, it does in a bullish uptrend though. This is not bullish uptrend. We're in a bearish downtrend. So this is why you have to understand the trend first. And then you have to understand all these different patterns and characteristics. But when we're falling, these kind of consolidating action, because the wind is blowing to the downside. So when you're hanging around, that actually that actually benefits the bears. Because, because why? Because the, the wind is blowing to the downside. But if wind is blowing to the upside, right? Like spider here, right? When when wind is blowing to the upside, hanging around, it's bullish, right? Because as you cultivate higher lows and higher highs, right? Higher lows and higher highs, we're an uptrend. So when you're in an uptrend and there's a consolidation happening, right? There's a consolidation there that favors the buyers. Why? Because we're on uptrend. Versus when you're in a downtrend, you start hanging around, that's that's usually favors the bears. This is why you want to always understand 
the overall picture and then you want to zoom in and do your shoulder term analysis and then you can strategize um, your entry point your target your adding point all that stuff so um, so again on the S&P going into next week I'm neutral I'm neutral I actually think that it's either could break out I kind of feel like there's gonna be a big move Either it's going to be a big move to the upside or it's going to be a big move to the downside. Any kind of steep decline around 290-ish level, 294, 295-ish, I think it's viable. I'll probably be accumulating. But the worst case scenario, I think the worst case scenario, potentially they bring it to 286 and fill this gap. But that's probably going to be for the maybe week after. But I think just going into next week or next couple of days, Monday, Tuesday, um, worst case scenario for Monday and Tuesday, I think is 298, 300, and 295. 300, 300 295 is for the first couple of days, the worst case scenario. The best case scenario for the buyers would be, remember we talked about it last time, uh, couple, last night? Sometimes bulls don't want to deal with this gap, don't want to deal with this resistance, you know, that falling resistance. Sometimes they can gap it up. Shenanigan like that could happen because what? We're still in an uptrend. We're still in an uptrend, right? So bad bulls can actually gap it up above 319 or 320. If we do see that, and I've seen these kind of stuff happening before in this kind of uh, price action, we'll go up and fill this gap at 333. If not, we see a continuation or gap down We'll go to 295, 295, 300 for sure. We see any kind of gap down, any kind of selling pressure early next week. We'll go to 295, 300, right? So either 295, 300 or 333. And uh, either way, I think you should kind of form your strategy where you're, you should be okay in both. So, cause I'm, I'm actually want to buy more. So I'm actually okay for this to pull back cause I want to buy more, but I'm also, also still holding many long positions that have been, I've been accumulating, you know, this year. So if it continues higher, that's fine too. Then I'll just be riding what I currently have. So I'm actually, either way, I think I'll be happy. And I'm almost kind of looking for a pullback. So then maybe I was able to buy some more things, maybe even get into some more spider calls and things like that. But so we'll see what happens next week. Obviously, I'll come back for you on Monday um, after close. We'll do the uh, daily update, right? And we'll follow up. You guys uh, enjoy your weekend. Thanks for staying for a um, one-hour video. I, You know, I've always wanted to keep these videos short, but just got so much thing to talk about. There's so many things going on all the time, and I want to make sure that I explain everything to you so you'll be fully equipped going into next week so anyway you guys uh, wonderful have a wonderful weekend and good luck training next week